Let me just say that it's nice to see a Thai film get this high level of production values, mm -hmm. which is not easy or it's not common in, in Thai films that I've seen. There's great Thai films, but there's only a couple of directors who I think are internationally known. Okay. And this, I think, is a high production value, well lit, well lensed, well shot, well edited film. And it's nice to see that mm -hmm. because you, I don't think you get a lot of Thai films. I think we're going to get a lot I think of, we're going to get yeah. more now. Like Korea is way ahead, you know. Right. But high production values, good actor. The two main actors are really good. Mm -hmm. I thought the setup was good. It was a little cliche, but mm -hmm. I thought it worked well. But then it started to fall apart for me. Well, for me, I felt like at some point w they had an idea of what the moral of the movie was going to be. And then they started drilling it over and over. Right? They started to like just hit it and hit it and hit it. And it's like, okay, we get the picture, but they were trying to like say it in so many different ways. Uh -huh. What is the moral? Because I'm, I don't even know. I got the impression that the movie was trying to tell me that Chef Paul's life is just not, it's no good. You don't want his life. Um, success at all costs, um, you know, leaving people behind and like not having any friends and. Um, prioritizing money and status over everything is just not worth it. Mm. And um, without love and friendship and the things that matter in life, mm -hmm. uh, things like a career in cooking or even food, mm -hmm. it's just not worth it. That's, I think, the moral of the, the story. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. And you could apply that to many different crafts, mm -hmm. obviously. It kind of flips the myth of the genius, mm -hmm. in a sense. Sort of exposing the the dark underbelly of the genius, um, you know, mythos, the, the whole mythology of, of, of genius. There was that element. There was also the, the socio... See, where I had a problem was the socioeconomic, the division of classes. I don't think they handled that very well. Oh, well, so why is that? So I think that was the other message. Like, yeah. they both come from lower class upbringings mm. and then they're serving food to these ultra wealthy people right this disparity mm -hmm. in wealth mm -hmm. I thought was not handled very well because I don't know what the filmmakers were trying to say about this division we see symbolically the gluttony of the of the rich mm -hmm. through the way that they eat right, right? and I guess a, an element of poetry in the sense that it's these lower class people Mm -hmm. who are giving them what they hunger for. Yes, yes. But at the end, mm -hmm. I don't know what we take away because it started fumbling. It just started fumbling yeah, yeah. the it was ball a sloppy, in, the, yeah. in the third act. So what happens is she becomes really good. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how she becomes a walk chef and then is all of a sudden good at these, like what this record producer in Nashville used to call tall food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the food that kind of stacks in the, in the middle of the plate. <laughs> With the sea foam, yes, like, yes, yeah, yes. garnish. I don't know how she got to that, <laughs> right. um, but we never really see quite how she develops. Well, we did kind of, because her uh, the, the guy who recruited her, who became romantically involved mm -hmm. with her, kind of gave her... Um, like a one day class in what he learned at like Cordon Bleu or whatever. Yeah, a date. Yeah, yeah, a date. But then he was, <laughs> it was implied that he was teaching her. Okay, the okay, that, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. She, so she breaks away from him because mm -hmm. he finally crosses her moral threshold. Right. And she goes out on her own. She becomes magically financed by some guy, mm -hmm. which is fine. That's okay. That's believable. At least it's not a deus ex machina or something like that. It actually it, it makes sense that somebody else would come in and finance her right. as this breakaway kind of talent, mm -hmm. younger talent. Mm -hmm. He wants to exploit her because she's the new thing. Right. Um, but she has this conversation with her boyfriend who discovered her. And she's like, why? You're not ambitious enough. You're not going for it enough. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of revealed that she has lost her way mm -hmm. and she's lost her family. And that's when I started going, well, wait a minute. What is the, her motivation in all of this? She said, I want to be special. Mm -hmm. And this reminded me of Whiplash. Oh, it, it, it was very, very reminiscent of rip Whiplash, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. We can talk about that. Yeah. But just to, just to finish kind of where I fell apart mm -hmm. with this movie is there's that element where it's like, I don't understand what 
why I'm supposed to root for her, really. And then it became, then the final act was this, this cook-off mm -hmm. for these rich people. Mm -hmm. And it's her teacher, it's the master and the pupil cooking against each other mm -hmm. for the favor of these wealthy people. Right. And it becomes this back and forth, like a contest, mm -hmm. like, a, like a boxing match. Right. Which is kind of what Whiplash did too, in a, in a sense. Um, um, right, not so not that literally, but yeah. yeah, yeah. But then at the end, they battled each other, and then the rich people just go on eating, and there's mm -hmm. no change. And so it's is are they trying to say that the lower classes fight among themselves while the rich just continue being wealthy? I think that was one of the messages because um, at some point there was one of the sous chefs. Um, they were catering to this like um, very broy crypto broy party, um, where like a bunch of um, girls were you know bought mm -hmm. to entertain these two crypto bros, mm -hmm. and uh, they obviously hired Chef Paul even though they had like they didn't really appreciate the food because mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. have no taste. Right, and there was a conversation between the the sous chefs, um, right, saying most of us we just we don't get there like yeah, we'll we don't never we'll be, never be mm -hmm, that yeah. and we just sort of like we stay here mm -hmm. for all of our lives mm -hmm. they kept mm -hmm. on saying um you know most people are not special if you want to be special you have to have that hunger you mm -hmm. have to be able mm -hmm. to you know make every sacrifice mm -hmm. and then you're also you have to have that thing mm -hmm. where you know you have to want it Right. right, and so that was the whole thing with Chef Paul. He was like, "Okay, you really need to want it." Yes, you know. Okay. Yes, yeah. and I don't know if I like that message. You hate that message. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but the thing I, but is, see, I do like the idea. I do like the idea of dedicating yourself to a craft, uh -huh. dedicating yourself to something that calls to you. Mm -hmm. But she said, "I want to be special." Right. That was her motivation. Paul's motivation was, "I want to." Mm -hmm. flip the middle finger to these people right. uh, from when I was young right. and they embarrassed my mom. Uh -huh. I don't think either motivation is good. Well, I don't think this movie was trying to say that that motivation is good. Okay, so yeah. then it's just a nihilistic film. No, I think in the end they were trying to make the point that it's not good, that that motivation is not good. Oi ended up going back to her her family's noodle entirely predictable you I, I mean we could see that yeah coming, she yeah. chose mm -hmm. when she could have chosen her career right mm -hmm. um she went back and she went back to running the noodle place with her family because mm -hmm. family is more important than being special mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know um i think that it was very clear what the movie was trying to say. Yeah, I mean, it was it was obvious mm -hmm. that that was going on. But but you had to the, just the way it played out. It was there was just nothing meaty. <laughs> right. <laughs> to, no no pun intended. There was nothing meaty to mm -hmm. it. It was either it was either nihilistic or heavy handed on on the message that mm -hmm. they were yeah, yeah. trying to say. And and so yeah, it's entirely predictable. Sorry, spoilers. Um, that she goes back to her family. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it kind of descended in th into this good versus evil binary played out among the lower classes who were, this is what I mean by nihilistic. There was no, uh, there was nothing to take from, from it in the sense that there was, again, the, when they had their confrontation at the end of the film, the competition, what happened after that was the rich just kept on partying. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's a commentary, but it's a very nihilistic one. That's fine, I don't mind nihilism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, but if that's the case, I need to feel something from the characters that I care about, mm -hmm. and I didn't care about any of these characters. Mm. Well, to me, it kind of sounded like, it, it looked like the mm -hmm. filmmakers decided what they wanted the message to be, and then they sort of like built the plot and characters around the message. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so it felt to me like a movie yeah. that had been thought up in a boardroom. Yeah, yeah, so somewhere. it kind of it, it kind of functioned like a TV ad or something. Yeah. Um, so that I think that's why maybe it didn't work. Um, there were so many other details that I really liked about the movie. Me um, too. Character study was probably not one of them. Mm.